Okay, call the meeting to order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tri Creek School Corporation of Students, Staff, and Community endeavors to be a recognized leader for high achievement and exceptional growth. Innovative and equitable approaches build upon strong community pride and provide all students with well-rounded educational experiences to prepare for future successes. Engaged to learn. Equipped to achieve. Empowered to succeed. Hi, welcome everybody. It was great to hear those little voices saying the pledge just now. I'm glad you guys are here with us. Um, are there any ag addition, agenda additions or deletions today? Okay. Um, opportunity for public comment uh, related to agenda items. We have none. Superintendent report. Yeah, I've got a smattering of items. Um, the first one is some board members and I and Jay will be traveling to Indianapolis tomorrow to attend a school board association workshop on artificial intelligence. This is a growing topic in everywhere, but especially in schools. And we'll need to develop a board policy, get student handbook language, and, um, and look at our user agreement for technology use within the district. Those are some of the immediate steps. And then, um, from there on out, there's a comprehensive of uh, professional development for teachers, uh, guidance documents, and how that's used in the classroom. So over the course of the next year, year and a half, this is ongoing, and just wanted to let you know that we are very cognizant of it, and it's rapidly changing, and there are a lot of districts waiting to see how to proceed, and so we're going tomorrow to get some guidance. So that's number one. Uh, speaking of Jay, Jay along with Safety Stacy and I uh, went up to the Lake County Sheriff's Department, I don't know, six or eight weeks ago, it seems like, and they were extremely complimentary of Tri Creek um, for the reason of, number one, Stacy and Jay both helped to coordinate their access to all of our safety cameras. So that if we ever had uh, an emergency situation where local responders would take control, they have ability at basically the command center to be able to communicate with law enforcement directly about whatever is happening inside our schools. They, um, they could not speak enough about the collaboration with Stacy and also with Jay and his um, expertise in, in technology. So, I, th I think that you need to be aware of that. And complimentary of Tri Creek because we were one of the first schools to sign on when other schools were reluctant to do so. We were the first we were number one. They um, approached us because they had heard that um, our technology was a little further along than some of the other schools and that we'd be a good partner. So we appreciated the opportunity for that. Uh, we had bid openings yesterday, and so Skillman right now is going through the bid documents. Um, and in order to maintain our timelines, we do uh, want to schedule a special meeting next Thursday, uh, the 21st at 7.15 to award those bids. They would be just the one agenda item. We should follow our work session. And then the final thing actually is Kevin, who has an update on a very big event coming up. Yeah, so uh, under a month now, we've got the big solar eclipse. So the date is April the 8th, and I've started to get some questions from community members, um, even like the whole public library asking if we're doing any type of special um, scheduling or anything for that day. So tomorrow, all families will get a message via Skyward email, and we'll share it on our social media too. Um, in bold letters there at the very top, it says there will be no changes to arrival or dismissal times on the date of the eclipse on April 8th. Um, just some fun statistics for us. So these types of total eclipses only happen about once every 375 years. So for our region, we can look at it happening again in about 2099. So it truly is a unique experience. Um, the timing for us is the eclipse begins around 1245 p.m. 
and then we'll end about 3.30. So that kind of really cool moment where the, the totality takes place is around the two o'clock hour. So we're a little bit north. So if you were looking at like Indianapolis schools, like they're right across that path of totality. We're a little north of it, um, but the totality regardless will be done at 2.15. So in the memo, it states that every student is going to be provided a pair of NASA-recognized safety solar eclipse glasses that Dana and her team have already got and are ready to go out to the buildings. They're sitting on the other side of this wall now. Um, and the kids will take them home too. So because there's transportation that takes place at that time, we're gonna send it home with them. In the memo, it talks about what the best safe practices are to make sure that kids are being safe and smart. So we linked all of the safety precautions as outlined by NASA. We put some um, web page updates in there from the Indiana NASA page specific for it to kind of help the families if they want to talk about it in advance too. So truly a, a really fantastic learning experience where they get to really see it in a hands-on way that, that I'm excited they get to, um, to experience. Are any of the buildings doing anything specific? In terms of like lessons activities, they, I, I don't know specifics to tell you, but when we brought it up in our district leadership team, they said that they've already had kind of conversations. Um, the Department of Education put together an amazing curated list of like every type of lesson by grade level bands for like if you need some inspiration, you don't want to have to pull it on your own. So the teachers have that to kind of guide it, but I couldn't speak to like a specific event. I could throw it to Lisa because I see she's over there. Is there anything that like very got on the spot or still to be determined? Yeah, to, to be determined, each grade level will have something. I know the STEM room at like very easy and easy to pull We've also got a bunch of really cool stuff planned. We've got a whole, like, um, we're all going to be going outside. We're talking to the cafeteria about doing like special moon cookies. Um, whole, they're working really closely with our science team, and the whole afternoon is going to be dedicated to solar eclipse related activities. So there's a lot of cool stuff planned. Awesome. Thank you all. I was in a meeting um, with other board members um, across the state, and that was a question that was brought up. And most of the board members were in that area of total eclipse. And it was interesting because each different school district was addressing it a different way. Some were doing an early release, some were staying in school longer. Uh, there was all, a whole variety of, of decisions made, but we're so far kind of out of that line of path. That, I think this will be a pretty cool experience though. Yeah, yeah. It, it didn't require us to you know, close school or anything, so. Yeah, thank you. And that's it. Okay, uh, staff recognition. Oh, here we go. So, Irony Kirchhoff from Oak Hill Elementary received one, two, three, four, five, six during this last uh, season. And so, uh, the drive by of all six uh, have comments that includes my daughter had uh, Ms. Kirchhoff in third grade. My daughter loved being in her class. She is patient with kids, and my daughter gained more confidence in herself and her schoolwork. The communication she had with parents was also very helpful. My daughter enjoyed her class and still talks about her. Mrs. Kirchhoff was such an excellent teacher for my son last year. She is patient and very nice, but firm, and that is exactly what kids respond to. Mrs. Kirchhoff is creative, patient, and goes above and beyond for her students. My daughter had Mrs. Karchoff last year and she was such a positive inspiration to my daughter. I could tell from the moment I met her during the teacher night last year, she was going to be good for my daughter and last year she did not disappoint. My daughter really looks up to her and it means so much. Even though my daughter is now in fourth grade, she still looks forward to seeing Mrs. Karchoff at school just to say hello. She is an amazing role model for students and those students who get her for third grade are very lucky. Mrs. Karchoff cares for and loves all of her students. The amount of compassion she has for each of her students is amazing. I have personally witnessed a student having a meltdown and yelling. The entire time she stayed completely calm and stayed with that student, reassuring the student that it was okay. As soon as you walk into her classroom, you can feel the amount of calmness she has by her voice, the dimmed lights and the calm music she has playing at times in the background. She constantly reassures her students that the only need to try their best and not be perfect. When she talks to you about your child, you can feel the amount of love and care that she has for them. Mrs. Karchoff is an amazing teacher who loves her students. So uh, she's been quite popular the past couple of weeks. And uh, the next one is Christina Leacopoulos, first grade at Three Creeks. 
My child struggle, struggles with her emotions at times and feels defeated when things do not come easy. We were so lucky to have Mrs. Leakopoulos loop with her students this year and help build her confidence. Not only does our daughter manage her emotions better, but she also enjoys coming to school every day. It starts with the relationships and Mrs. Macopoulos, uh, Leakopoulos does not only create the safe environment for her students, but she also gets to know her strength, their strengths and weaknesses, helps them to become successful, successful and pushes them to be their very best. Megan Bieber Hoover, our speech language pathologist uh, who floats around. Uh, this specifically came from Three Creeks Elementary. Megan is an outstanding speech pathologist. She goes above and beyond to meet her students' unique needs and to help teachers provide assistance to students who are not even on her caseload. She shows up every day with a smile on her face and our kiddos look forward to going to her classroom. Her work does not end at 315. If she is not coaching girls on the run, she is carting home a bin of files to work on overnight. Her dedication, passion, and enthusiasm make her an asset to our school corporation. And finally, Karen Deal, kindergarten teacher, Oak Hill Elementary School. Our young family member is in Mrs. Deal's kindergarten class at Oak Hill Elementary School. Since the first week of school, our son has shown such excitement about learning and creating just everything, reading, math, and art. Mrs. Deal should probably be a kindergarten teacher mentor to her peers because she has truly excited and inspired our young son about every subject. He is learning so much in her classroom and he is thriving socially there as well. Our son has experienced a great expansion in his abilities and desire to explore the basics reading, writing, and math, as well as art and other subjects. He comes over to our house and writes and draws and asks us to quiz him on math for fun. And we have a lot of toys for him here. Something amazing is happening in Mrs. Deal's classroom. We deeply appreciate this great start to our boys elementary school experience. Thank you, all caps, Mrs. Deal. These are great to hear. It's really nice to see so many people getting on board with these notices and um, we have so many great staff to recognize, so this is excellent. All right, uh, board member reports. I have one. Uh, last night we had our NYSEC uh, board meeting, and there's the traditional items on there, but some of the items that may relate or do relate to us, our school students, uh, they updated their fire safety and evacuation plan to ensure that all kids, staff, and um, parents are aware <coughs> what to do during an emergency. There's both the evacuation plan in the event of a fire within, and then there's also a safe room uh, plan uh, in the event that something happens outside and they need to get away from the windows and glass or be locked down in an area that's safe for them. And so that, that was a positive thing. One of the most outstanding uh, things of the meeting was a proposal to create a position uh, defined as the Instructional Strategies Program. And what that is, is having a uh, professional that goes, a teacher that knows all of the intricacies of all the different disciplinary levels within the special ed co-op to go around and assist teachers during their times of difficulty. Whether it's their misunderstanding of what the expectations are, whether it's fr frustration from within the students, um, it's, it's there to add an additional layer of support uh, for teachers in their struggles. And um, the, the models uh, approach from different avenues. One is the behavior of the student. You have one student that's just extremely difficult. A lot of teachers may not have experienced that prior to this episode. Um, and so this uh, position would support the teacher and provide some alternative ways to address the needs of the, the student. The other one is supportive. Just if a teacher doesn't feel that they're doing a good job, or if the results of the progress of the students does not demonstrate um, success for the students, then the supportive role would come in not to demean or, or hurt the teacher, but to offer support for them and provide them alternative ways to enhance the school um, environment, or classroom environment. And then a collaborative is again to provide training for teachers of something new. AI might be something that uh, traditional classrooms might use this for. 
but it's not intended to be demeaning or threatening. It's there strictly for support. And the ultimate outcome we're hoping is that teachers don't become frustrated and leave prematurely from their position. It also offers teachers lateral mobility that if they feel they could do better or offer more at a different position, they're able to transition when opportunity arises. So this is something that will affect all the schools in the co-op, including Tri Creeks, and I thought that it was very beneficial to hear the proposal, and I would support that. Uh, just because, again, it's not an impunitive uh, endorsement, it's to support our teachers that need help or want help. That's excellent. And that's it. Thank you. You guys got anything? Um, just a little update on the construction meetings we've been having quite a few lately um, regarding the natatorium space and the gymnastics um, cheer space and just in general our whole inside athletics facilities um, we've kind of identified a couple of areas that um, we didn't realize maybe need a little bit of attention specifically bathrooms and concession stand um, right there in that main lobby kind of where you go into the basketball or you go into um, swim. So we're looking into that. Um, we have a community member who is a um, gymnastics uh, judge uh, locally that's come on board to help us with the layout and just giving some advice and expertise in that area for the gymnastics room. And is there anything else? I think that covered pretty much the basics. Yeah, and we're going to go tour some schools on Monday to see their pools just to make sure we're dotting all of our I's and crossing our T's with the new pool plan. So, And then you guys will get to see everything on Thursday. All right. All right. Next up, Lake Prairie Elementary School Spotlight Presentation. our Lake Prairie Elementary presentation for you tonight. Just to kind of start us off, I'm Lisa Stoll. But I'm the principal at Lake Prairie, and I have Mrs. Harris here with me tonight, and she will talk in a little bit. She is our student support advisor. We are one school in two locations for a few more months. Um, you can kind of see some of our statistics up there. We do have 18 classroom teachers, so we have three classrooms at each grade level. Our music and our PE teachers are three-fourths time, so not quite full-time. Um, and then our other specialist teachers, our art, our STEM, and our media specialists, they are full-time, and they help support some of our Tier 3 interventions when they don't have classes. So they are meeting with kids regularly to help support them. I have with me tonight some of my student council members and one of our sponsors, Mrs. Sherry Norton. She teaches third grade at Lake Prairie. Probably about four years, I'd say, our student council was not at a very good place. They didn't do a lot for our community, for our school. Um, and so Mrs. Norton, Mrs. Luzinski, our art teacher, and Mrs. Treasure, our PE teacher, took it over. And they've run with it. Um, and it's been amazing, and it's been nice to see over the past you know, two years, it's definitely difficult when you have a fourth and fifth grade program and they're in two different spaces. So you know, their creativity and bringing them together as well as some support from John Becker with some transportations in the morning um, have allowed us to continue this program. So they're gonna talk to you tonight about some of their different projects they've done this year. You can see them right there, yeah. I'll move this out of your way. Hi, my name is Ashton Fournette, and I'm going to be talking about this mental set. This year, we had a mental set. What is this mental? It is a scented pencil that offers many different scents. There were even holiday scents, but my favorite is Blue Raspberry. We made $1,152.57. Wow. 
The money we made from the Smensel sale went towards the Teacher Appreciation Coffee Shop. The Smensel sale went well because the kids love them and think they smell amazing. The Smensel sale was a great success. Hi, hi my name is Lawson Cunningham. Today I'm going to be talking about the Teacher Appreciation Week. The student council, council members have decided to rent a coffee truck for all the teachers at Lake Prairie Elementary. The student council members will decorate cardboard sleeves to put on the coffee cups. The teachers will place their orders from a large selection of coffee and non-coffee choices. When the coffee is done brewing, the student council members will deliver the coffee to each of the staff at, staff members at Lake Prairie. We want to show appreciation for all of the staff that helps us at Lake Prairie Elementary. Hi, my name is Taylor Rice. Today I'm going to be talking about the food drive that we held during Thanksgiving time. In November, the student council did a food drive. Each each morning during our food drive, student council members collected food from all the classrooms. We then, we then organized the items in bags and boxes. We collected tuna, peanut butter, jam, laundry pods, diapers, and other household necessities. All the food was donated to Low Church of Christ and all in the Community Help Network. Like Prairie families were very generous and, and donated over 700 items. Kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth graders had a specific list for what items to donate. The law community and church members were all very appreciate, appreciative and thank you and thankful for like Prairie's donations. Seeing all the donations that were brought in made student council members feel good about helping our community and helping others in need. Hi, my name is Haley Rosteski. Today I'm talking about the donation drive for the police department. This year, the student council did a donation drive for the, for the police department. We collected prepackaged snacks, water, gum, hand warmers, and a whole bunch of other stuff as well. We made one big box for the entire police department. We also made individual baskets for Officer Mink, Officer Noison, and Officer Corning, who are the resource officers at, at Lake Prairie. They were super appreciative of all the items that were donated. The student council collected many items and it was a great success. Hello, my name is Matthew Melkerick and I will be talking about the Great Heart Challenge. During the Great Heart Challenge, we donate money because we ask our friends and family to give us money to donate to the Great Heart Association. What the Great Heart Association does is they donate it, they spread out the money evenly to multiple hospitals who help children and adults with sick hearts. During the challenge, you can earn incentives and rewards for the stuff that you, for the money that you bring in. Like for $5, you can get a keychain. For $10, you can get a junk card. Um, it was a great success this year. We raised $1,900 and it was a great success. and sharing and all of this exciting stuff with us tonight. I hope that you continue all of this hard work of being leaders in your school. Thank very, you. very, very impressed with your hard work. Keep it up. <laughs> so when we look at our school improvement plan, we have three main goals, attendance, ELA, and math, which they're kind of small right there, but we'll get into them so you can read them in a little bit. Our first goal is attendance. This is our second year in a three-year school improvement plan. So when you see the different percentages, you'll see the three different years. Um, when we first wrote it, we were at 97.3. So you'll see our percentages don't go up by very much, um, but we're at a very high number to start with. So it makes it a little bit more difficult. <laughs> Here's a graph of our last four years. Last year was a really low one. It was definitely a rough year. Um, as we started to kind of dig into it a little more, this very first year of 2020, we were quarantining at that time, but there were so many options for virtual. So when kids were out for different things, they were still counted as present. So it's a little bit 
of a hidden. Um, right now we are at 96.9. So we're still definitely below our goal, but April and May are usually better months for us. This past, I'd say six weeks has been insane. Just, I mean, numbers I've never seen. Um, the past two days have been really, really good. So hopefully we're on that upswing and we'll start to see that 96.9 increase. But when we really started to dissect some of it, some of this is just, last year we had 35 students who missed over 18 days of school. And that's for any reason, um, whether it's a doctor's appointment, vacation, it doesn't matter, that's strictly, they weren't in school. Currently right now, we're, we have 81 who are over 10 days. Um, and then 25 who are over 15. So who are really already very close to that 18 days. So Mrs. Harris does a lot with those families um, as far as, you know, how can we support you? What can we do to increase to see, you know, why are they really out? Um, one of the, as I started to really look at the numbers, one of them that really stood out to me was that we've had over 75 students take a vacation this year. And that's three or more days. Um, is what I had looked at. You know, and for some of those, that might be the only five days of school they miss. No problem. But we see a lot who are taking 10-day vacations or multiple vacations, and so that's where it really starts to impede their learning. Kindergarten is our lowest percentage, which is very typical. You know, it's, for a lot of them, it's their first time in school. They're gonna get those sicknesses. Third grade is our highest percentage. Nice job, Mrs. Horton. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when we looked at our lowest 20 from last year, so our, the 20 kids that have the lowest or the most days absent, uh, two have since withdrawn to live with family members that hopefully they'll be in better situations elsewhere to get them to school. Five are about the same, but 13 of them have improved from last year. So that's very positive. Some of the strategies we've put in place this year some of them are very silly, but make a huge deal for the kids. Years ago, before COVID, we always did perfect attendance magnets um, for each quarter, and we got away from that. And so we brought that back, and they just show up on the kids' lockers at the end of each quarter. Or if they don't have lockers, we go into the classrooms. Um, and so that's a huge incentive for them. And then just perfect attendance ribbons on classroom doors. They get super excited about it. Um, you know, sometimes it's a hard to have those discussions, especially with the littles, like don't come when you're sick. Like it is not worth the match. <laughs> um, two other things we've put in place, you know, we see a lot of times when kids aren't, you know, sick with a fever, sick with, you know, strep throat, but a lot of times they're just anxious and they don't want to come to school. They're nervous about coming to school. So two things we've put in place are morning meetings and second step lessons, which Kim Harris is going to talk a little bit about. Hello. Good evening. <coughs> Morning meetings are something that we adopted through the responsive classroom approach, which has a lot to do with helping students feel more comfortable building a community within each classroom. And it also has a lot to do with being sure that kids are staying on the right track in terms of learning social skills and being able to interact with each other, being able to speak to their teachers and, and ask questions and get to know people and feel like they belong. Um, that's one of those basal needs on Maslow's hierarchy. So we know that that's something very important, that not only do they belong, you know, with their families, but with us as a, as a school family. We want them to be comfortable. And we want them to be engaged in what's going on in the classroom and with each other. And so it's very important that we're able to give them opportunities to do that and practice that. Morning meetings is such a, such a thing, okay? Every week I send out slides to the teachers that involve four aspects. They have a I always have something funny to kind of perk them up a little bit to get them going in the mornings. Um, and then there's a greeting that they do. Now they can sit in a circle, and usually that's what we encourage them to do, is to sit in a circle on the floor. Back when it was COVID time, they all sat at their desks and waved at each other, you know. But it's a time for them to do a fun greeting of some kind to where that they can make sure everybody gets acknowledged that morning, that they're saying each other's names, that they're really getting to know one another and be very polite that way. We also do a sharing time and a group activity. Sometimes the sharing time is totally separate. It's a totally separate topic. Sometimes we, we put them together like this. And this year, this past year, we introduced the zones of regulation into Lake Prairie. That is actually our theme this year is that tigers are ready and in the zone, okay? Ready to learn and in the zone. 
So by teaching them these kinds of things that have to do with emotion management, which is also part of our second step curriculum, they're able to identify a little bit better what they're feeling and why. They're able to then get some steps and some support and how to manage that and what to do with it. So that if they're in the blue zone or they're in the yellow or the red, how do we get back to the green? That's our focus. So that's very helpful for them as well. Because sometimes you can't name an emotion. As adults, we even feel that way sometimes. We don't know exactly to tell what to tell you as to how we feel. But if we can tell you a zone, then that helps. Okay. So that's part of what we try to do. We do pretty regular ZORs or check-ins with the kids so that they can help us understand what's going on in their lives. And sometimes that lends itself to a conversation about you know, what's, what's happening and how can we help you and support you in that. Sometimes some of them end up coming down to see me or they go in to see the behavior assistant for a little while to figure out what's going on. But that's a great help for them to feel like they're being heard also and for them to help understand where they're at and how they're feeling and what to do about it. And then uh, the morning message, the, the teachers usually fill this in with the information they need to know for the day. So those are the four main components of the morning meeting for the responsive classroom approach. And we do that every morning. And then second steps is our social emotional learning curriculum that we use. We use it across all the elementary schools as well as in the middle school. And what's helpful about that is that there's four units to that. It has to do with the first one is the growth mindset. You start off the year talking about that for a few weeks and help them understand why it's important to persevere and keep going and start the year off strong. Then you have the um, emotion management segment, which goes along with our, our Zohar stuff very well. Then we have the um, empathy and kindness section that usually comes around around this time of year or a little bit earlier. We do the Great Kindness Challenge at the end of January. Then we do um, the, the empathy and kindness section. And then we move into some time talking about disability awareness in March. So it all kind of ties in together and goes together nicely. And then the last uh, unit of that will be the problem solving unit, which is a super important skill that we want them to have. So all of that helps to build that community. It helps them want to be there more helps them want to be able to engage with each other. And those lessons are done within the classroom by the teachers themselves, and then we just want to reinforce that. So just things we do to, to make sure they feel like they're a part of our community. That's a great proactive approach. Mm -hmm. Trying to head it off before it becomes an issue and uh, serving the kids well. One of the neatest things, I think, is our morning meetings came out of one of our fourth grade teachers, mm -hmm. Mrs. Deppa, who came to us and was like, you know, I'm seeing these problems in my classroom. I want to do some research over the summer. Can I implement this come next year? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we saw that first year she did it. We saw a drastic drop in discipline and increase in attendance and just they were a community. So then we're like, okay, we have like this has to become a building wide thing. Um, so we started it the year of COVID. Yes. <laughs> because then when we shut down, it was a great way. So many of our teachers still continue to do those morning meetings via a Google Meet first thing in the day. So, or at least a few days a week so they could still kind of keep that pattern going. It's refreshing to see that um, time taken away. Sometimes we're in such a hurry to get to the content stuff. And so, you know, they say sometimes you have to slow down to speed up. And it seems like that's what's happening here. Like taking that moment to slow down is really giving them the opportunity. And I want to champion success. her, okay? Because she's an amazing <laughs> administrator for starters. I love working with her. We've been together for seven years now. It's been it's been a great thing. And I want to say that she she makes that mandatory. I mean, she has blocked off the scheduling for specials and everything else to where we have that first 15, 20 minutes of the day to do this stuff to start off the day with. And so that helps a ton. She's very supportive of that. So thank you. <laughs> our next goal is our I Learn ELA, and I'm sure it will be no surprise, but this is probably the most depressing of the goals, but there are some positives. Um, back in 2022, we were at 59.7. Our goal for 2023 last year was 68%, which is a pretty big jump, um, maybe a little too lofty. We did not meet it. So with our goal for this year being 72%, it's very unlikely we'll get that, get there, but we are definitely just aiming for those increases in percentages. A um, few years ago, we did have you know, a steady jump, and then last year was a slight decline, so we want to see it move back up. And we've been doing a lot of different things to get there. Uh, whenever we look at our 
I learn scores, we like to look at them not just as a whole, by, but by each individual grade. Um, and so you can see like this, these three that are the same color, that's the same cohort of kids. So this is them as third grade, they went up quite a bit in fourth grade, and then had a drop in fifth grade. You see that here as well, you know, an increase from third grade. But there was an increase in fourth to fifth, and then a slight decrease from third to fourth. So we're definitely a little all over the board. There's no real distinct patterns by those cohorts. We definitely have noticed there's a big jump from third to fourth grade, I learned, and just the difficulty of the passages, the lengths of the passages, the number of passages. It's definitely something we've spent a lot of time on this year just to increase that rigor and that stamina so they don't just see three pages worth of stories and are like, yeah, I'll just answer the questions. Mm -hmm. um, but really trying to build that up in them. Well, you know, we are definitely are not where we would like to be when you compare us to some of our neighboring schools. We are definitely up there, so that's promising. One of the things we use to see if we're on track is NWEA. So when you look at this over here, the blue and the green are your groups that are projected to pass iLearn. Um, and so we are projected at 61.5, which is an improvement from last year. Obviously not at our goal, but is an improvement. Uh, but I think one of the exciting things is how big our yellow section is, because those are the kids that are getting close. They're almost there predicted. So, you know, this was back in January when we took this. So there's still definitely a lot of time and our teachers have spent a lot of time really digging into that data to see where those gaps are to get all kids, but especially those yellow kids. This shows the growth our students made from spring, fall to winter. Um, kindergarten is our highest growth, so the diamond is where they want you to grow to. That's like your expected growth, and the blue bar is how much we actually grew. So our kindergarten blew that one out of the water, which is typical for kindergarten as well because they're just like little sponges. Um, fourth grade was our only grade level that didn't meet the growth goal, so as I said earlier, you know, digging in a lot to see why is that, what do we need to do with that specific targeted group of students and teachers. Some of the different ways we've done that is through our professional learning communities. They meet every Tuesday with a different topic where they look at recent assessments, set goals, come up with ideas and strategies of how to meet those goals. A lot of them, you know, they group their students amongst each other to try and target the different areas. Um, we use Ma both Mastery Connect and NWA to help us do that, to help us figure out where the missing pieces are. One other thing that's been a huge focus of from last year and this year, last year we worked a lot on the Wonders curriculum. It is just a lot. And so last year they spent a lot of time finding those necessary pieces as well as the gaps and one gap was definitely in the writing so this year we've been focusing on snuckings writing and figuring out those strategies to teach the writing um, when you look at our i learn results or look at some of their written responses they're not always the most thought out um, so that's definitely been an area of focus this year and it's exciting to go into classrooms this year and see kids like cheer when it's writing time because that's not typical <laughs> so that's been a big change this year so i'm hoping that we will see that reflected in their results um mind play is one other program that we use to help support our students all of our second graders use mind play and then third fourth and fifth graders select students who receive interventions they especially my second grade teachers are so good about making sure the students get their minutes and because of that you can really see a lot of growth so when you look at the number of students who are in the red or the critical at the beginning of the year compared to our most recent data um, we had no students in blue above at the beginning of the year 
and now we have almost a fourth of our pie. And so that's really due to their consistency with the program and making sure it's being used appropriately. So while our reading results aren't where we'd like them to be, we've made a lot of changes this year. We've definitely put in a lot of the work, and so we're hoping, you know, NWA is saying it's making a difference, so we're hoping come April we see that in our assessments. Math is a much more exciting one. <laughs> we, our goal was to go from 76.2% to 83% last year, followed by 84, 85% this year. We didn't quite make it last year, but we did increase by 4%, which is fabulous. Um, so we are headed in the right direction on that bar graph. You can see, um, you know, this particular group went from a 69 to an 82, and then went down slightly to a 77 last year. Um, but that's still, you know, even when you look from third to fifth, that's still a very large increase. There's a lot to celebrate when it comes to iLearn math results. And there you can see us compared to other schools or other corporations around us. We are very high up there. And then when you look at our NWEA and where we're projected to be, you know, last year we were at 80.6. Uh, NWEA is projecting us to be at 86.2, which that's amazing if that happens. <laughs> um, not as many yellows, obviously, because so many are already greens and blues, but that red pie is very very small, so that's exciting. You can see when we look at our NWEA and what they ex where the expected growth was, or projected growth was as compared to the actual growth, four of the six grades were in the 99th percentile. So kindergarten first, fourth, and fifth. And so second and third, they might not have been in the 99th percentile, but they were still above. So. This data is, for sure, a reason to celebrate. Some of the things we've done to help with this, just like we do in ELA, we have the professional learning communities and the Mastery Connect and NWA. So both of those, we alternate between math and reading. Ascend is a computer program we use with some of our intervention students to help fill in those missing gaps. They can work at their needs. And then Flex Fridays is just part of our math curriculum. And so every Friday, almost every Friday, they don't do an actual math lesson. They'll use that time to make small groups to do so that everyone is working on what they need to work on. And I think that makes a big difference. And then just one last celebration. Um, back in February, we were able to go down to the State House and receive recognition for having 100% passing I read last year. So, which is also a big <laughs> so in my that's, this is the second time. I think it was my very first year we also had 100%. So, um, it was very exciting just to be recognized for that. And obviously, you know, Mrs. Morton and her team worked very hard on that. She's also one of our I read tutoring teachers, so to really focus on their needs and what they need. Thank you so much. A lot of good Thanks. things happening. <laughs> Thank you very much. For yes. awesome it's a great place. Presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm biased, but I love it. <laughs> Super sad that I have no more the kiddos. It's the end of my time at like three after this year. Thank you all for coming. You do not have to feel obligated to stay for the rest of the business side of this. Thank you. I know it might get late. <laughs>
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Approve payroll and claims. I'll go ahead. I'll make my motion to approve payroll and claims. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve the personnel report dated Thursday, March 14th, 2024. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Okay, business operations. Approve resolution 2024-02 regarding supplemental payments for the early literacy grant. You wanna take it or you want me? Sure, I can. So there's a resolution here for you to consider. Uh, this is a supplemental payment. Uh, this is money from the state that they dedicated towards uh, folks that K through three teachers who, uh, Andy, what's, this, what's the standard, what, what, what's the phrase? Who instructed? Uh, reading, reading, reading I mean, instruction. Reading instruction. Up instruction. through okay. grade three. Yeah. Up through grade three. Yes. So we work with our teams here, um, including our discussion team, our teachers, our principals, to develop a list of what positions. Now, some school districts, and this is up to the discretion of the school district as to how they want to distribute these funds. So we received twenty-five thousand one hundred two dollars and twelve cents to distribute here. Uh, and through the collaboration with all those groups, we decided that um, it wasn't only a certified teacher distribution. They wanted to include anyone who had a hand in helping our literacy um, here from K-3, including tutors, paraprofessionals, um, nice folks who were speech path and things like that, media aides, uh, those too. So the breakdown of this is uh, 96 people are getting a distribution. The other wonderful thing that came out of this is after much discussion of how to distribute these funds, it was decided by the team that we do an equal distribution regardless of what position you were in. So it's not like certified got more than support equal amongst all so that's great um, so that's what you see on your sheet there is that the 96 folks that are on the sheet will get 261 dollars and 48 cents as a distribution from that 25,102 and 12 cents uh, from the tri creek side we have 45 teachers in there and 39 support folks from the NYSIC side, there are 12 people that were sending that money to NYSIC. They will pay those folks. We have 12 NYSIC folks, which include two teachers, two speech math, seven paras, and one LRE facility. So that's the breakdown of that. Um, so the resolution before you is just asking for the permission to make that supplemental payment to those folks. Exhibit A has all their names, their dollar amounts, and I will take that NYSIC amount and send that check off to them so they can distribute it as well. <coughs> Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2024-2. Uh, Any further discussion? All I'd like to say is I'm so thankful that you broke it down equally for them. I remember days <coughs> where we grouped it and that was a nightmare. That so this is a fair way to do it. Teachers actually to do that for this because they recognize their um, support staff as having a big part in that as well. Equal stakeholders. That's so a team. Yes. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye, motion passes. Okay, number two, approve the purchase of furniture from KI Furniture for Lake Prairie, Oak Hill, Three Creeks Elementary Schools, and Lowell High School. So the scope of our capital improvements entails the inclusion of uh, new furniture for our elementary school. So always beginning with purpose, uh, we brought some photos. Uh, many kids have utilized this furniture and it has a, had a long, useful life. I think we might have utilized that furniture. <laughs> and maybe your parents. <laughs> maybe. And so there are some samples. Uh, so all three elementary schools will be equipped, uh, pending your approval tonight, with uh, new classroom furniture. And so a typical classroom setup would be 28 uh, individual student desks, and you'll notice that they're cantilever, so legs uh, swing easily in and out. Uh, the chairs are not the hard plastic that you saw in the previous photos. Uh, they have a little bit of give. And then you have small group instruction furniture. 
new teacher desk, uh, podium that is mobile for teachers to go around the room. And the, the chair that goes with that is actually dual purpose. It also is not only a chair, but it, you flip it around and then it serves as a stool. Um, so that is an elementary uh, mock-up of the classroom. Our elementary and STEM and art classrooms have built-in storage, a nice uh, top conducive to uh, the work that goes on in there. Each uh, media center at elementary is slated for uh, updated furniture, table, small group learning as well. Uh, before we move on to high school, I do, uh, Mrs. Stoll hung around, her and Mr. Nanaga led the process of getting elementary teachers together. They then took them over to uh, Three Creeks Elementary where we had a truckload of furniture, samples that were brought. They took their teachers in there, looked at all of them, um, went and had conversations. KI came back. Um, we did some revisions. We had three furniture meetings per <coughs> uh, school. Um, it is important to know that we did do our research on selecting a vendor. We did do school visits uh, to ensure that and had some interviews with people who were in use of the furniture. We got stellar service. KI not only uh, really listened to us, uh, they listened to not only the teachers, but uh, we had music teachers and art teachers and, and media aides that came to the table, uh, gave their input. KI also coordinated with Skillman and with Jason Wathen, our buildings and grounds. And so I cannot say enough about how smooth this process went. And so thank you, Lisa, for doing that. Um, moving on, the intermediate school, immediate school in, in this room will have uh, an update that includes furniture that's very similar to the high school picture that you see there. So the high school rendering uh, will be updated and you can see the small learning environments uh, kind of with a coffee shop kind of a feel um, that kids respond to these days. There's an overhead view. Um, you see a picture on the right of the new Board of Education room that will also multi-purpose as creation station um, at the high school. There's a closer look at the furniture. You see a variety, you see high tops, low tops. Um, you see, I call them the eggs and I can't remember what they refer to them as, but um, that situation right there, or that setup right there can accommodate uh, class of 25. And then um, there were sections of the high school cafeteria where some of the tables were pulled out and you see some booth seating and some high tops and some chairs that enhance. We did not redo the whole cafeteria setup at the high school. And there's another bird's eye view of the high school media center and small group instruction rooms that will also be here at the intermediate and middle school. And then as I referenced earlier, creation station in the board room. These are uh, collapsible collapsible tables that all nest together, store away nicely, you can configure them in any, so very versatile. Um, I hope you're not disappointed, but we did say we don't need a big bench for the Board of Education, like it's a, you know, your court. We really wanted that room to be used for everybody. Mm -hmm. And so um, the, the purchase orders that you have on your docket today are basically for all three elementary schools and the high school. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. Um, so I do have a question. With the desks for the elementary schools, in the billing um, things that we got, it looks like they have no underneath storage. Is that, are they just a top and no storage? No, they all have. They do, okay. Okay, I was like, where are they gonna put things? No. <laughs> yeah, I get it, we're on computer. Yeah, okay, good. They do all of it Okay. Okay, any other? The total for um, all the furniture for the buildings, $2,112,036.41. Uh, the cafeteria is $101,192.72. Um, that will be paid with cafeteria funds. So that's separate. This is coming in under budget. 
by at least about 175 to 200,000 because we still have some sharp um, uh, furniture for this building to match what we purchased here. Um, so there's still, so it's going to be under budget. What are we going to do with the furniture that's not used anymore? Are we going to auction it off? Craft auction is, yes, I'll bring you a um, contract that we've been working with them. They'll be able to, uh, I, I think we're looking at selling full sets of classrooms, like taking a picture of the classroom, putting those on there, and we'll be able to, that'll make it much smoother for us to get it out of the building and get the new in uh, in a timely fashion. Okay. So, yes, it'll be an online auction. Um, I definitely heard um, some accolades from KI, um, from other staff that were involved in this process, just randomly saying they have been amazing. So appreciate um, that we went with them and used them and appreciate the collaboration that just continues to be coming up today within our schools. It's really good to hear. KI's been around for a while with us. So. Good. Okay, so any further concerns? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Approve the cancellation of stale dated checks. This is a yearly housekeeping here, so any checks that are two years stale dated or two years outstanding as of December 31st can be brought to the board um, in order to be canceled. And of course, we've um, made numerous attempts to contact these folks that these checks were made to. They are all individuals and one business of like and we have spoken two businesses we have spoken with both of them um, my name wasn't on there was it no it wasn't. <laughs> I'm sorry um, yes and so there's notes on there as to how they were contacted when they were contacted it's a total of nine hundred fifty six dollars and ninety two cents so many of these checks are one dollar five dollar checks that, um, yes and um, so we they will go back once we cancel them they go back into the fund that they were drawn so we'll deposit them back in there Okay. How does this process, like, when you realize that there's a check, do they, do they mail checks out, or do you just send them a letter and let them know that there's a check here for them? Uh, it depends, because these are not necessarily, there's only two from the court, the rest are all high from school, middle schools. school, yeah, they're all from the individual schools, so it may be a PTO check that was handed off, or it may be um, something that's handed to a parent as they withdraw their kids, you know, like that, and never gets deposited, and we don't have, you know, contact, or they don't, you know. It's so they physically add the check, and they just never cash it. Yeah. Is that correct? Pardon me? They physically had the check, but yes. then they never cashed it. Most likely, yes. Okay. We mailed it to the address that we had, and we contacted them, and yeah. Okay, well, I'll make a motion to approve the cancellation of the stale, uh, stale, stale dated checks. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Okay, technology. Accept the bid proposals from Matrix Integrations of Jasper, Indiana for E-Rate Category 2 equipment. This is a follow-up to an item that I had board approval on last month. Um, we accepted bids on our Category 2 equipment, which includes some power and networking pieces. Uh, the bids that you approved at that meeting came in uh, great, so we actually had some funding available in the grant fund that we utilize for these purchases. So we wanted to maximize that so we didn't lose it. So we went back out to bid, purchase, or would like to purchase some additional power equipment. Uh, we had six eligible bidders. Uh, Matrix was the winning bidder from last time for some of our equipment. They again came in as the low bidder on this project. So this would just be uh, an additional set of um, equipment for our buildings. Uh, and I would ask for approval on that. Okay, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the bid proposals from Matrix. Any further discussion? I did notice that at the top of one of, at the top of their billing um, invoice, it said women-owned company, and it's yes. you know, Women uh, History Month, so it's nice to see. Um, all right, um, let's go ahead and vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay, we have twenty-six donations. Um, some, a lot, are from for Lake or for um, yeah Lake Prairie's Field Day. So, <laughs> hang in there with me as we get through all of these. Accept the donation from Mr. and Mrs. Ronald <coughs> Denise and Denise Vance of Cedar Lake, Indiana, in the amount of one hundred dollars to help fund 
the Lowell High School Paul Hoffman ECA Scholarship. Accept the donation from Patricia Stein of Lowell, Indiana in the amount of $50 to help the Feed Them Forward Fund to pay down negative student meal balances. Accept the donation from Faith Selig and Family in the amount of $50 to help support the Feed Them Forward Fund. Accept the donation from the Lowell Athletic Booster Club in the amount of $1,220 to help fund the Lowell High School baseball softball helmets. Accept a donation from Lowell High School girls basketball team in the amount of $150 to support the Lowell Middle School Junior L Club Special Olympics. Accept the donations from Mr. and Mrs. Charles Charbonneau of Lowell, Indiana in the form of Waliki Hooper balls uh, for the Lake Prairie Field Day for uh, valued at $19.98. Accept the donation from Mr. and Mrs. Jeremy Carlo of Lowell, Indiana in the form of an Intex Great White Shark Ride toy valued at $16.89 for Lake Prairie Field Day. Accept the donation from uh, I just lost this spot. Mr. and Mrs. Todd Hegelson of Lowell, Indiana in the form of nine inch plastic training sports cones valued at $22.99 for Lake Prairie Field Day. Accept the donation from Mr. and Mrs. Scott Cache of Lowell, Indiana in the form of two more Waliki Hooper balls for the kids valued at $39.96 in support of Lake Prairie Field Day. Accept the donation from Mr. and Mrs. Timothy Kodiker of Cedar Lake, Indiana in the form of a Kinden 15 pipe pipeline team building activities kit valued at $25.99 to support Lake Prairie Field Day. Accept the donations from Mr. and Mrs. Nathan Korth of Lowell, Indiana in the form of 50 rubber duck bath toys valued at $9.99 in support of Field Day. Accept the donation from Miss Jennifer Labas of Cedar Lake, Indiana in the form of a splash tower valued at $180 in support of the Lake Prairie Field Day. Accept a donation from Mr. and Mrs. Christopher Osika of Cedar Lake, Indiana in the form of a splash tower valued at $180 and a Waliki Hooper ball for kids valued at $19.98 for Field Day. Accept a donation from Mr. and Mrs. Joel Markinich of Lowell, Indiana in the form of a Great White Shark Ride-On toy valued at $16.89 and a Giant Gator Ride-On toy valued at $17.60 for Field Day. Accept the donation from Mr. and Mrs. Jason Martin of Lowell, Indiana in the form of some more uh, hopper balls for kids valued at $19.98 for Field Day. Accept the donation from Mr. and Mrs. Bradley Newen House of Lowell, Indiana in the form of a Sunset Glow Baby Pool valued at $10.48 for Field Day. Accept the donation from Mrs. Jessica Nicholson of Lowell, Indiana in the form of more hopper balls for the kids valued at $19.98 for Field Day. Accept the donation from Mr. and Mrs. Gregory Peckney of Cedar Lake, Indiana in the form of a Giant Gator Ride-On Toy uh, valued at $17.60 and a Cram Super Soaker Toy valued at $26.99 for Field Day. Accept the donation from Mr. George Rangel of Lowell for, in the form of a Kinden uh, 15 Pipe Pipeline Team Build Activity Set valued at $25.99 and EDI PS Red 16 Ounce Party Cups <laughs> valued at $19 for Field Day. Accept the donation from Mr. and Mrs. Christopher Rush of Cedar Lake, Indiana in the form of some more of those special balls for $19.98 and some more party cups uh, for Lake Prairie Field Day. Accept the donation from Mr. and Mrs. Dewey Tucker of Lowell, Indiana in the form of 50 rubber duck bath toys valued at $9.99 for Field Day. Accept the anonymous donation of four pairs of shorts valued at $38.70 for Field Day. Expect the, accept, accept the anonymous donation of two packs of men's shorts valued at $37.90 for Field Day. Accept the anonymous donation of a giant uh, dice valued at $21.99, a super soaker, $26.99, inflatable kiddie pool, $24.78, squirt guns valued at $26.99 for field day. Accept the donation from Three Creeks Elementary School PTO in the amount of $292.41 to support the grade three study trip. Accept the donation from the Three Creeks Elementary School PTO in the amount of $560 to support the fifth grade study trip to Challenger Center. And I have got to see this field day extravaganza <laughs> that right. you are about to have. <laughs> we can get very creative because we don't have much space. 
I am so glad we're adding on just for this. <laughs> the construction has taken away our grass right now, so like I have to look at it. Weird, so we'll see how. Well, Lake Green does have quite the field day. So yeah, I'm there every year, and we've got 20, 30, 40 parents volunteering, and there's stations and. The kids all get right. soaking wet. And it's an event. I think I drove by last year and saw everything, and it looks the ground like rumbles exciting. when that occurs. <laughs> it's crazy. All right. I'll make a motion to accept all 26 uh, donations. I'll second. All right. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you all for the donations. All right. Public participation, public comment to non-related <laughs> agenda items. I have one. Um, Riley Hevel, you have three minutes. Perfect. Um, seems we've had nothing but good news today. Um, it's unfortunate that we have to end it like this. But my name is Riley Hevel and I'm a junior at LHS right now. Uh, I'm here tonight to simply voice my opinion from the perspective of a student on the, of the decision that was made to not renew Mrs. Patrick's contract. I'm sure you're tired of hearing about it, but I ask that you hear me out. And I ask that you hear me out because it is mine as well as many other students' futures that lie in your hands. I'm not here because I'm being forced to or because the teacher told me to be. I'm here because I want to be here. I want to be involved in what ultimately affects mine and the future of my peers. <clears throat> um, while I know the decision has been made and there's nothing that I can say that will change it, I'm not here to try to change it. What's done is done. What's to come is my bigger concern. One day out of nowhere, I was sitting at lunch and heard the rumor they were firing Miss Patrick. This didn't quite sit right with me as I felt there was no reason she should be getting fired. This is what initially intrigued me to attend all the board meetings regarding the decision-making process, and I have sat and listened to many teachers, former students, and even a current peer speak their opinions on the situation. However, in reality, it's not about the, the teachers or the former students. Sure, the teachers should have a say as they are affected by it, and sure, students can always speak about their experiences. Well, what good does that ultimately do? That's in the past. What truly matters are the students and the students who are going to be in high school in the upcoming years. I am the one responsible for many of the social media posts regarding the situation. After attending the first meeting and hearing only teachers and former students speak, I thought to myself, why aren't the students who are currently directly affected by this not voicing their opinions? They're the only ones who should be because it's about us. Because of this, I made it my mission to try and get more student body involved. I've had a wonderful high school experience, as I feel many other students have had. Um, I have a brother in eighth grade right now who will be a freshman at LHS next school year, and I'm kind of concerned. I'm concerned that he will not have the same experience I've been fortunate enough to have. I'm concerned about what the possible, possible alternatives to the situation might be. I hope that whatever plan is in place or whatever idea I think will work will truly work for the sake of the students at LHS. I hope that whoever or whatever the alternative is will greet me at the front door with a smile on their face and make me feel welcome into school like Ms. Patrick did. I hope that whoever or whatever the alternative is will start every morning over the announcements with the same, if not a more enthusiastic and prideful tone than Ms. Patrick had, which quite frankly I feel is going to be hard to beat. She made me want to be at school even when I didn't want to be. Uh, while I may not completely agree with the decision that was made, and I don't know all the facts, I do know that the potential exists for things to go quickly downhill, just as there is potential for things to go very uphill at LHS. I hope this decision and any of the future decisions that are made will always put the students first. And if you're not sure what's in the student's best interest, try talking to some. I would be more than happy to answer any questions or concerns that you might have regarding what I as a student feel is best for us students. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. You are a leader. Thank you for coming and talking tonight. Okay. Other information, the Board of School Trustees has a scheduled work session for Thursday, March 21st at 530 in the Middle School Teachers Lounge to discuss the Lowell High School Natatorium. A special meeting of the Tri Creek School Board of Trustees is scheduled for Thursday, March 21st at 7.15 in the middle school cafeteria to discuss or to approve the bids. The next regular meeting of the Lowell Tri Creek School Board of Trustees is scheduled for Thursday, April 11th at seven o'clock in the Lowell Middle School Media Center. Are there any questions or comments from the board? I thought we were supposed to play dodgeball tomorrow night, but obviously- I haven't seen anything about it. Together, but there is dodgeball at the high school tomorrow night. I think they've got like Teams or something like that it starts doors, doors open at five and I think it starts at six. Five dollars to get it. I didn't see any information ever come across about it. So yeah, 
We were just asking if it was still happening. Well, I think that there was teams that were scheduled to do it, and then as of Wednesday, they didn't have enough teams. Um, and then Wednesday during the day, during the day, I guess they got. Are you, are you going to be there? I'm, I'm not going to be there, no. Yeah. So, but yeah, I know that there are two. I would play one year. It was the first year. I, I, there's somebody else at this table that played the first year, too, and it was Dr. Nathan Kleefish. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still feeling the pain. No, 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 no rumor is that it's the 20th anniversary of the Dutch Bowl game. So oh, wow. I don't know if that's yeah. true or not, but it is. yeah. Is it? Yeah, I mean, it it's a great event. Okay, I was going to say, it didn't happen when I was here. first year. I wanted to also discuss something at the high school and it was noted in ours, but the um, Sound of Music theater production that took place last week at the high school was incredible. We have some very talented individuals in our school and one of them was your, um, Distinguished I, thank you, I can't get Junior Miss out. Um, so it was really nice to get to go and see something, um, a growing program that, that's coming about. So anything else? All right, meeting is adjourned.